for everything Cardinals. Everything Cardinals. Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. This is In the Red Zone with Cardinals head coach Jonathan Gannon. Presented by Earnhardt Hyundai and Ford dealers. Shop local, shop Earnhardt. No bowl since 1951. Every Monday at 3 o'clock, we have the pleasure of chatting with Cardinals head coach Jonathan Gannon. He joins us right now on the Arizona Sports Line. Coach, thank you as always for the time. How are we doing today? I'm excellent. How are you guys doing? Good, doing good. good, doing good. Heard the news just a few minutes ago. You're saying if everything goes according to plan, Kyle will be able to play. Let's, th- let's go back a couple of days. You add until Saturday, 1 o'clock, to activate him for the Cleveland game. I know it came down to the wire. What ultimately made you decide that he wasn't going to play that Cleveland game? Yeah, just a week of practice and uh, wanted to get another week of practice under us, working with the ones totally um, coming up this week. So just made the decision what we thought was best for that week, and uh, on we go. Look, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it everybody anyway because a lot of us think like this. Cleveland on the road, one of the best defenses in the in the NFL, was part of it to, hey, I don't want to throw him out there against that defense as his first start in a year. <laughs> no, it was I, not I, actually. I didn't, I didn't that's, think that's so. Very, that's very valid, very valid. But um, Collar doesn't think like that. We don't think like that. It was just uh, we we just felt like we needed another another week here under his belt of practice and running with the ones um, for the for the full bulk of practice for the week to get him ready to go. Yeah, no, I I totally figured that, but you could understand how we think like that sometimes. Absolutely, right? yeah, that's okay. valid. So going forward now, how given that it's an ACL surgery, given that it's a recovery from that, uh, how do you alter the play calling that he's a run not a run based quarterback, but that's such an arsenal for him? Do you do you alter how you call a game or how Drew will call a game knowing that he's coming off the surgery how careful are you going to be with him no i think drew and i will be lockstep how he's going to call the game but we're going to maximize his skill set so um you know obviously if he's out there we feel he feels good enough we feel good enough that he's physically ready to play mentally ready to play and we'll use him accordingly Uh, look just on a personal basis i'm excited to see him what's your excitement level to finally get a chance to see him in a moment like this yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for him, uh, knowing that the work that he's put in since I've known him, since I've been here, um, it's been a long road as any you know big time knee surgery, knee recovery, ACL recovery, um, and I know the type of work that he's put in, and I know that he's ultra competitive and he wants to play football and uh, help his team win. So uh, I am excited for him and for our team. How much has he been bugging you this past week, these past couple of weeks? How bad has it been him trying to make his case for being out there? Yeah, he's been bugging me since since February, you know. <laughs> but uh, knowing that it's a process that he has to go through, and um, you know, we just it's it's cool because we've had really good communication the whole way through, and um, kind of set out a plan. And we, but when you set out a plan, you have to take it day by day too, because it's not linear. A plan is never linear when it t- talks about coming back from an injury like that and um but i'm uh, i'm excited for the week i'm excited to see him play look you've been in this league a long time um and, and injuries are part of the game i get it but man you guys are just decimated dj goes down hernandez goes down you don't have connor you don't have Ertz. like you guys have suffered some major injuries it makes it hard to compete but let me get the update on the two offensive linemen i know you signed a guy from the bears practice squad today that could play guard and center give me the updates on dj humphreys and will hernandez yeah we'll see how it goes this week um, i'm hopeful for both of them but you know they got to be ready to go and do what they need to be able to do so we'll just kind of evaluate it throughout the week and see how it goes and um, i know both of those guys though if they can go they'll go so uh uh, we'll just see how the week goes. We got to talk for four hours every day. And, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about that football game yesterday. And people are like, hey, how do you evaluate Clayton Tune? I can't. I mean, I, I, you can. Maybe you know, you're the coach. But I, I just, you know, knife to a gunfight type of thing. I mean, he one read and then run. One read and then run. It wasn't like he was able to sit there, go through his progressions, look off some receivers and try to find the open guy. How do you judge him on that one game? Yeah, I think there's a really good learning experience for him. You know, reps are gold for a rookie, especially a rookie quarterback. And, you know, there's a lot of learning that went on today. But, uh, you know, obviously we have to play better around him to give him a better chance to succeed too. Um, And that's in the run and pass game. That's all of us. That's coaches, players, everybody. So, uh, but I think that uh, he handled the environment well. He had a good look in his eye. 
and uh, this will be part of his process to keep ascending for us and be a good player for us. Yeah, I, I, that's kind of something I wanted to ask you about, like given how rough it was for him out there. How do you approach Clayton Toon after yesterday? Does his confidence need a little no, mending right no, now? No, not after? at all. That's a good question, guys. That, no, he's he's good, man. This guy. That's why we drafted him. He's got major confidence and knows that he needs to keep working on his game but he didn't blink at all when it wasn't going well he didn't blink uh he was getting the adjustments he battled in there all the way until the you know the horn went off but uh i was proud of him and and trust me like he, he's he's gonna he's gonna do well for us jonathan gannon our guest here on the burns and gambo show off the heels of his announcement at the press conference moments ago that kyla murray if all goes well will start this week against the atlanta falcons at quarterback i know gambo asked you about the two offensive linemen uh Clearly, it goes without saying, I'll say it anyway, having James Conner back this week with Kyler's return would be a huge help. Do you anticipate there's going to be news about him at any point this week? Yeah, I think we'll see how the week goes with him, but he's progressing well. Obviously, he wants to play. You know, he's 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 itching too, but uh, got to see how the week goes with him, how he responds to the workload and everything like that, but uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that he's out there with us. 13 nothing at half, right? They get that They get that 45-yard field goal. Um, your defense did a hell of a job keeping you in that football game. I know you guys had a hard time moving the football and get, you know couldn't get across their 40, but, man, for, for about uh, a half and a little bit more, your defense did a great job of giving you guys a chance. Yeah, I thought they battled in there and played pretty well, you know. I mean, obviously there's some plays we want back on that side too. You know, I told them today the one that got batted up in the air and, and caught, sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way. But we responded the next drive and, and forced a punt there. And, uh, you know, they, they've, they've been battling. They've been improving too. And sometimes it's hard to, you know, see light at the end of the tunnel when you know that you're improving but the winds aren't showing up. But if we keep doing what we're doing on that side of the ball, in all three phases really, just keep improving our game, the result that we want will come. So uh, I'm proud of their effort. I'm proud of their attitude. The execution, I thought, upticked with certain things that I, I haven't been, you know, quite pleased with. Um, and we've been coaching it up and, and making sure that they're on the details of that stuff. And they really, I think they took a step forward. Seemed like the only breakdowns, you know, when I'm looking at this game, was a couple of those plays to Amari Cooper. That won the first half of 59 yards. And I think, uh, you know, Thomas just kind of left them, uh, left them there and he got behind the defense. And it was that one in the second half as well. It went for like 49 yards. It looked like he just beat Hamilton and Buddha was a little bit late going over. When you look at those plays, those big plays right there, what are you saying? Yeah, I mean, the first one that you talked about, that's a, that's an error on me, uh, how we were playing that coverage, and we had to get that corrected. And then the second one, we just had to clean up a little bit of technique. But, uh, you know, we know that Deshaun and Amari, they're, they're two really good players. And um, I thought for the most part, we did a pretty good job on Amari. Those two plays obviously stand out, two explosives to them. Um, and that's how they generate their explosives. But uh, the first one completely on JG, and then the second one we just got to coach up the technique a little better. I always like asking about the rookies and how we think they're doing. Uh, two in particular I want to ask about, Dante Stills and Garrett Williams. How do you think they both played yesterday, Coach? Yeah, I mean, I th you know, Dante had some good plays in there. I think, you know, had some production. He's playing in the run game better. I think he's rushing better. Uh, and he's playing a lot of snaps for us, too. Um, and then I think Garrett, you know, he's continued to progress over the last couple of weeks, um, made some plays in there for us. You know, there's some couple of things that he needs to clean up too. But uh, I think for him, especially, you know, missing all the training camp, missing the first part of the year, uh, what he's done in a short amount of time, um, he's really produced at a high level and has played winning football. And uh, it's a credit to him that he stayed locked in and could learn all those things that we're asking that position to do without getting all those reps. And uh, he'll only – both of those guys, all are rookies, but those two that you just asked about, they'll continue to get better. I'll ask you about this because you had him for eight games. And I know you had a lot of respect for him, everything he did and coming in here and playing quarterback for you guys. But it was obvious with Kyler on the verge of coming back that Joshua Dobbs was not going to play much with Kyler on the verge of coming back. But he had himself a heck of a day yesterday coming off the bench for Minnesota. I'm sure you're very happy for him. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, he's a he's a warrior man, and I, I didn't get to see the game yet. I'm watching the Atlanta's offense right now, but uh, um, I heard he had a really good game, made a couple plays there to help win the game, and it's not surprising to me at all. Coach, as always, we appreciate the time. Best of luck this week. We are all looking forward to Sunday and watching Kyler Murray's return. Thanks for coming Thank on for a few. Thank you, guys. All right, appreciate it, guys. Right. Have a good week. You got it. You Thanks, too. Coach. Jonathan Gannon joining us here on the Arizona Sports Line and the Burns and Gambo Show.